the wonderful picture. And uh, I don't know about you, but um, I don't necessarily have my wine glass here handy, but I know that I want to be there. <laughs> I want to be sitting right there um, at that table, having dinner, glass of wine uh, with the Oceana Riviera in the background. I am so ready. So I don't know about you, but that's where I want to be. Welcome everybody to this evening's program. We just want to thank you again so much for, for joining us. Um, of course, this is a presentation from Expedia Wine Club Cruises and Oceana Cruises. And tonight, as we, um, as we go through the program, we do want to welcome your questions. And for those of you who have traveled with us before, I just want to say thank you for joining us again. Um, we are so grateful for all of our past guests who cruise with us again and again, and our winery partners, of course. Um, you know, we are very proud of all the accolades, but that's really what we're proud of the most are all those guests who continue to come back and visit us again and again. So thank you for that. And as you think of questions um, throughout the program, we'd like to invite you to enter them into the chat box. You'll notice that down there at the bottom, you'll see that little arrow. And that's where you can uh, touch the chat box and type things in. And then at the end of the program, we'll go ahead and make sure that they're all addressed. And of course, there's also a way for you to adjust the picture. So if you find that one side is too large or too small, you can just grab that little part in between and drag it one way or the other. So again, thank you for joining us. You're going to be hearing from a few people tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce our hosts. We have a special guest from Oceana Cruises. Uh, Michael Von Wittenau uh, is the Regional Sales and Marketing Director great guy who really knows his stuff about Oceana Cruises. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking to him. Of course, we have the gentleman who you really, those of you who came in earlier, you saw Brian there, uh, but he's going to speak with us a little bit tonight about what makes our program so unique, because we know that there are no other wine cruises like ours. And so it's kind of fun to hear what makes them different. So he'll share that with you. And then of course, I am uh, pictured there. I'm going to be your moderator for the evening and delighted to be here with you. Uh, my name is KK, and I am the Vice President of Sales for Expedia Wine Club Cruises. And uh, boy, what a tough job that I have, right? Wine and travel. Yeah, life is rough, but I enjoy every moment. So we wanted to talk with you this evening about why we choose Oceana Cruises for our wine club cruises. Um, you know, we could just, we could put our programs on any cruise ships, but not just any cruise ship will do. And so to talk to us a little bit about what the differences are, why Oceana, I'd like to invite Michael to join me. Uh, there you are. And oh, wait a minute. Are you in the penthouse? Oh, yes. I have good taste. I'm not. In the, I'm in the owner's suite. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm really this, jealous. This is the closest I'll ever get to being in that suite, JJ. <laughs> I take that back. When I said that I wanted to be there earlier, you know, um, um, in Greece, I decided that I want to be there during the port days, but I want to be where you are right now uh, while we're at sea. That's that's for sure. Absolutely. But Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I love how you share the passion um, that we do about great food, great wine. It all has to come together, really good service. And this is where Oceana really excels. Um, so maybe you could share with our guests uh, a little bit about Oceana and the differences. What makes Oceana really special? Absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> well, I, I agree. I, I firmly believe, first of all, no one does the wine cruises like you all do. And I, I honestly believe it's a perfect pairing with Oceana because you have these great varietals to enjoy. You've got to pair that with uh, beautiful food. And that's where we step in. So um, Oceana, we're built with, I mean, the easiest way to set, sum it up is three pillars. We're small ship luxury. We're not the real big mega ships. So a lot of space, um, but a lot of choices for the size of the ships. Um, exquisitely crafted cuisine. And we, we uh, are known for offering the best food in the industry. We're very proud of that. And curated travel experiences, taking, to you, taking you where you want to go, hopefully. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the size of the ships. So this particular trip is on my personal favorite ship, the Riviera. She is a beautiful ship. And this is her stacked up to some of the, the, the bigger ships are out there. We're almost like a little lifeboat. But uh, this little lifeboat has a lot of restaurant choices, the biggest state rooms in our class. Um, and again, just a, a beautiful, wonderful, um, non-pretentious environment. 
beautiful ship. She only she only has 625 staterooms and suites. And you'll see that by this picture by the pool. And wow, I, like you, I'm ready to start traveling. When I see these pictures too, I just get so excited. But uh, that is the main pool of the Riviera. Um, the design is um, very residential. Um, we have no formal nights on the ship. It's um, dresses you wish going to a restaurant in your favorite hometowns and so forth. Um, but it's very, very comfortable, very elegant. But again, um, a very comfortable type of environment. There's a lot of different uh, lounges to choose from as well. One of the things you'll notice in Spars, the little touches is the, the art collection around the ship. If you're an art enthusiast, like, like I certainly am, you'll see beautiful original works of art. But what's really fun about it is you'll see works from the old, the, the big masters, the big names, but also some of the artists and the boutique ports that we travel to around the world. So it's really kind of fun to go around and explore the art on board. So I encourage you to do that. This is an image of one of our standard um, uh, veranda staterooms. We have picture staterooms as well, which is the same with a large floor to ceiling window. All the categories have Bulgari amenities. And what's really nice about these staterooms, no matter what category you choose, the staterooms, uh, excuse me, the bathrooms of the staterooms have a full size tub and a separate shower. Um, this is the getting a step up to our penthouses. Um, not only are they larger, but they also include butler service. So a beautiful accommodation. On this particular cruise, it's not that much more to upgrade your experience into a penthouse suite. I know KJ will talk more about that. So let's talk about the food. Well, I'm coming to you from sunny Palm Springs, California. It's about di dinner time. So um, forgive me, my stomach growls a little bit here. But I want to tell you, we, I talked about um, you know having the finest cuisine at sea and so forth. But that's really attributed to our executive culinary director, Jacques Papin himself. And he's not just a celebrity name associated with our brand. He's very hands-on. He sails with us at least twice a year. He, he uh, assists with training the staff, creates the menus and so forth. And um, it, he creates really a, a beautiful atmosphere. So um, one of the things that Jacques talks about, which I think is a real key to the quality is the ingredients. Um, we try to buy everything fresh and local as we cruise the world. Um, everything is fresh as possible. Our fish is never frozen. It's either bought locally in the markets or flown in. And it's like going to the farmer's market. It just tastes better when you buy fresh ingredients like that on the go. Um, before I go into the setting, I wanna share a little trivia with you. I'm a big lobster lover as some others on this call is. And we have lob lobster available, for example, every night, every restaurant, even at the poolside grill, um, you can enjoy a grilled lobster tail. But we're the largest consu uh, consumer, I guess, lack of better words, of lobster in the cruise industry. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. But here's the setting, the restaurants. We have several different restaurants for, me to, for you to choose from. All are complimentary, so there's no additional charge to dine in these restaurants. The Polo Grill is our steakhouse. I have to tell you the best bone and ribeye of my life was in that very room on the Riviera. Um, then we have uh, Toscana, um, amazing fresh made pasta. My personal favorite is the aged balsamic and cheese trolley that will give any Michelin rated restaurant a run for their money. It's just you can make a meal yourself. Now Jacques has his own restaurant aboard the Riviera called Jacques. Uh, you can see in this picture, the artwork in the background, all the arts from his private collection. My personal favorite thing to try in this restaurant, if you, if you were to ask me, is a seared filet mignon topped with foie gras and truffle sauce. You just want to die after that meal. It's just fantastic. Uh, red ginger, um, wonderful, um, lighter um, Asian type of flair, miso cod to die for. My personal favorite is the duck and watermelon salad. I'm not a duck fan, but I tell you, pair those two together. Spectacular with a, a lovely Sauvignon Blanc, and you've, um, you've got yourself a meal. Then we have um, the Terrace Cafe, which you can dine a la carte. And um, as you all know, the cruise industry is on a pause now, pretty much. But... As our ships come back, they're going to come back even better than ever. And those of you that have sailed with us before are going to see a lot of nice new enhancements. For example, in the terrace, you're now going to see a noodle bar. You're going to see a taco corner, um, different selections like poke bowls, bowls and so forth. A lot of really new um, uh, culinary offerings that you didn't see in us before. So we're excited about that. So that's the terrace. And then... Um, we also have a room on the Riviera called the Reserve. And this is a private dining room, but it's all about the wines. So we have different um, themes, if you will, on different nights where we have a beautiful selection of wines or champagnes paired with um, culinary uh, 
creations of our executive chef. It's only 24 guests. There is additional charge for this because it's based on the wines or champagnes being served. We rolled out just a year and a half ago, a very special night with Dom Perdion. So every course will be paired with a different vintage. I highly recommend it. Then we have the Culinary Center. And what's great about our Culinary Center is it's not just a sit there and watch, which um, we're all used to in a lot of different uh, ships and so forth. It's a roll up your sleeves and get cooking. So you actually make what you cook. And what makes it a lot more fun is they're serving you wine while you're cooking. So it's, it makes it even better. But uh, 24 guests, as you can see by their own cooking stations, a lot of fun. Baristas is our version of Starbucks, if you will. Um, on the Riviera, we just completely redid the space. Spectacular. It's triple the size with a lounge, more food and beverage offerings, but a nice place to start your day before you head on shore and do some nice wine tasting. Back to the pool and that sunset. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I found another place that I want to be just there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that I asked you to do a, a quick why Oceana, but I have to say that all of those things really resonate with me when it comes to the culinary expertise, all of the food that is sourced fresh locally. And of course, um, as everyone saw all our pictures in the very beginning, James, one of the co-owners, um, he still holds the record for the number of lobster tails consumed at the terraces. <laughs> but it's, it's such a wonderful experience. When you showed those staterooms, when I noticed how large they are, 282 square feet for our industry, that's really large. And the penthouses, 420 square feet. So there's something really different uh, about Riviera. And I love the spaciousness. And yet there are technically, according to the ship's gross tonnage, she could carry almost twice that number of passengers. So there's lots of space everywhere. Like you, she's probably one of my favorites. And, um, and, and of course, that leads me to where does she take us? So I'm going to take you on a journey for where one of our featured cruises goes. And we're gonna talk a little bit about a particular sailing coming up in October that I am thrilled to say that just about every port is one of those where I say, I wanna be there. Um, so we're gonna talk about the October 6th sailing of the Jewels of the ancient world. This sailing goes from Barcelona to Istanbul. It's a 12 night cruise. And what I like really about this 12 night cruise is it gives just a little bit more space. You have an opportunity to indulge in the ship activities, the, the ambiance to really relax on board the ship. But I'd like to take you on a journey through this itinerary because we're gonna start in Barcelona. Barcelona, the way I learned to say it when I used to spend my summers in Spain. So Barcelona, of course, home of the tapas, Home of Gaudi, of course, we're going to see the Sagrada Familia, the beautiful cathedral. And I will tell you, if you haven't been there recently, uh, I was very excited to see the updates, how beautiful and clean it is. It's simply spectacular. We're going to go on to Marseille. And Marseille really is open, the kind of the gateway to Provence. So you could go up to Aix-en-Provence. You could go to the museums. There's just so much to see. All of it is so close. It is your gateway to the south of France. Also, we stop in the little port of Portofino. One of the beautiful parts about sailing on a ship that's not that large is that you can get into some of these getaway places that you couldn't otherwise. And Portofino is just such. I'll never forget the time that we went in there and strolled the little tiny streets and found cafes and a place to sit down and have a glass of wine. It was simply brilliant. Of course, one of the pinnacle destinations on this itinerary is Rome. Uh, for those who have been there, there is, of course, never time enough to see everything there is to see in Rome. So I, like me, I assume you would love to go back. But for those who have never been there before, it's a great full day um, where you can really go and you can see the Colosseum, you can see the Forum, you can get to the Vatican, in to see the Sistine Chapel. There's just so much to see and do. Um, and of course, you have to have a little gelato right there by the Trevi Fountain. It's just brilliant to have a little gelato there. I know where the shop is. I can tell you all about it. We're going to stop, of course, in Sorrento and an opportunity to go out to the Isle of Capri. Uh, once again, now we're talking about the Italian Riviera and it's just stunning. Going to Taormina. We're getting now down uh, to the bottom of the boot and into Greece as we go to Argostoli, right? We're gonna go to Kenya. Um, when we talked about that one picture that was sitting out there on the harbor and the ship was just outside, that's there. 
Um, I can tell you that not too far away is not only all those little restaurants and cafes close to the water that you see, but great markets, fun places to, to go and see. When we pull into Athens, uh, this is an opportunity for you because a ship actually pulls into Piraeus, which is about uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Athens itself. Um, so you can act, either see the ruins that are really close to the ship, or you could go in and you could, um, of course, visit the Acropolis. Uh, you could make a full day of it and have great adventures in Athens. Uh, the port for Ephesus is actually Cushadasi or Cushadasi, depending on who you ask. Um, but it's a wonderful opportunity to go in and see the Roman theater, to go ahead and see the, the wonderful, um, the amazing uh, ruins there in Ephesus. And they have a special excursion where you can go in and you can actually see a light show. It's, it's quite brilliant. Um, and then one of my favorite ports in the entire world is Istanbul. Why? It's a confluence of all of those wonderful um, ancient civilizations that have gone through there and have all left their mark. And what's wonderful is to see them coinciding, living right next to one another. Um, whether you go into the Blue Mosque, when you go into the museums, um, they're all right there. Of course, I spend a lot of time in the international market there and I make sure that I have an empty suitcase because I bring it home full of all kinds of wonderful spices. So you can see that there's such variety on this particular itinerary. It makes me very, very excited. And many of you on the call tonight um, have sailed with Paul Wagner before, and he is our wine host. And that makes it even more exciting because I know that having, for example, been with Paul in Barcelona, I'll never forget the time that we went into a restaurant and we looked at the wine wall and he said, I want that one and that one and that one and that one. And what are you having? Oh yeah, we'll do this and this. And he knew exactly, not only about the wines, but the stories behind them. It's just so much fun. I know that you'll have a great time too. And to tell us more about what makes our wine cruises really special, I would just like to invite Brian Murphy. Uh, he is the co-owner and president of Expedia Wine Club Cruises. And he's the one who comes up with all these amazing programs. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about what makes them special, Brian. Well, thank you, KK. And thank you for um, walking us through this featured itinerary. And Michael, as always, did a great job describing what a great cruise line Ocean is. And I, you know, get the privilege of working with a lot of great wine people and wineries and Paul Wagner, certainly one of my favorites because of his knowledge, his great speaking ability. And really I think of Paul as an entertainer because he has more stories about the world of wine and the history of wine, which is of course what he does. He teaches the history of wine at Napa College. And of course he's been in the wine industry for, oh, must be 40 plus years. Um, and so, this particular sailing and in a lot of our wine cruises, you know, we work with wineries in North America and we travel to different parts of the world and we bring the wineries wine with us because in many cases, the wine club for that winery is with us. And so the folks get the treat of being in a great wine destination, but also um, that familiarity of being with their favorite winery. In this particular sailing, what makes it really special is a couple different things. But first and foremost, we're not bringing any wines from North America. All the wines that you'll have on board will be regional wines from Spain, from France, from Italy, from Greece. And uh, Paul and I are still working on how to source some Turkish wines. And we think we'll have that done. But um, so you're going to have this immersive nine different wine events going on with one of the leading wine experts in the world that is truly an expert about European wines. And he'll really be able to take that deep dive with you in terms of the history, how they became what they became, and what is going on in the world today with these wines. Um, but we'll have a wine seminar about the wines of Spain, a wine seminar about the wines from France, a wine seminar about the wines from Italy, and a wine seminar about the wines from Greece. So hitting you know, some really major regions. And then of course, we'll have four 
different wine dinners featuring wines from those areas also. So you, you get this great nine different events on a 12 day cruise that has a, I think a, an outstanding itinerary and certainly concluding in Istanbul, which I, I'm not exactly sure how many years Istanbul's reopened to the world. It's been maybe two or three years that we see ships calling on Istanbul again. So I know for Paul, Paul's like, Brian, I want to do another wine cruise, but it needs to start or end in Istanbul. He says, because that's on my bucket list of places to go. And so um, you, it's this is a, a unique sailing that we have. I mean, we do 20 to 25 different wine cruises every year. But when you have Paul on board, they just become a little more special because we can really feature the regional wines in the area that we're at. You know, Paul just did, we just did a New Zealand uh, cruise in 2020, early 2020, pre-COVID, um, you know, and Paul usually travels with us once or twice. Typically, he's with the American Wine Society cruise every year as the, the lead educator there too. So for those of you that don't know Paul, I will tell you that I think there's, we work with masters of wine, master sommeliers, winery owners, winemakers, and they're all wonderful people and very, very talented. And Paul will just dazzle you with what a great speaker he is. And so you combine that with the wines that we're going to be procuring in Europe to have on this trip. It's a 12 day cruise. And if you want to be in a balcony room, those that beautiful 282 square foot balcony room for 12 days, the, the entry level balcony price, I think was $4,148. It's a screen, you know, what people talk about is the travel industry is coming back and we're booking lots of cruises right now. But in many cases, the 2022 cruises, we're seeing price increases, but the 2021 cruises are, are still a great value. And of course, this is in the beginning of October. So I think most of us will have our COVID vaccine. I go tomorrow morning for my COVID vaccine, uh, my first shot. So I'm excited. Um, and uh, I know that, you know, that opportunity will be there so that the world will start to come back to normal. So um, the other piece that I just want to talk a little bit is about Oceana and the level of professionalism on board the ship. Oceana, besides being really fabulous with cuisine, which is of course a requirement when we're doing wine cruises, they also have a staff of wine people on board that are truly wine professionals. I have met so many different uh, wine people on board Oceana and they're all studying for different levels of uh, wine degrees and studying to become truly experts about wine. In fact, the last time I had Paul Wagner and we were on Riviera, um, we were talking with the uh, food and beverage manager and Paul ended up doing a wine presentation to the all the wine uh, folks and the waiters on board the ship as an educational piece for them just as a, to help them with their education. And it was attended by literally every person on board the ship. And it was an optional program for them. They truly do have a personnel that really wants to make your vacation special. And for me, it's always a pleasure to work on Riviera, which is my favorite ocean ship too, Michael. And, uh, uh, you know, and I, I know a lot of the people that have worked on it throughout the years, because we've usually, usually have been on that ship uh, almost every year. And uh, it is truly uh, a beautiful ship. I'm anxious to see all the new enhancements. And, uh, and I know this one will be a great cruise for us. So for those of you with the travel bug, October's a long way away still in COVID time, <laughs> as we see the, the changes happening. Um, I will tell you that this cruise is going to be spectacular. And it is a great, great value compared to I'm looking at some 2022 different products and they are certainly more expensive than this one and, and on a fairly beautiful itinerary of 12 days. 
Okay, I will sign off and give it back to you, KK. Well, I was just going to say, I think part of what you're saying is so important because um, it is a tremendous value. Uh, I spoke with you earlier and, and, and I get so excited because um, $4,100 for a balcony stateroom for 12 days and knowing how much is included is, is really, really spectacular. And of course, in addition to that, we are offering um, some special inclusions. And one of those is prepaid gratuities. And of course, we know about the cuisine. We've been talking about that. The internet is included for us. Um, and, you know, we mentioned down there at the bottom, the complimentary non-alcoholic beverages throughout the ship too. One of the things that I love is being able to go into the little barista and, and have a specialty coffee or a specialty tea, a latte, something special. There's none of this nickel and diming all the time. It's a great experience. And I got excited when I saw that because we blocked this space and that's why our pricing is so good, way, 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 way in advance, we were able to maintain some of that uh, inventory that's not available to anybody else. And that penthouse that we saw, the 420 square foot, it's only $5,700. I got really excited about that because that's where I want to be. So thank you, Brian, for sharing with us some of the things that make this so special. And you're absolutely right. The, the ports of call, the, the food and wine program, all of this really culminate into a spectacular sailing. And of course, you add Paul on top of that and it just makes it excellent. Um, so thank you for that. What we'd like to do is we'd like to invite you to join us. And um, for guests who are making your reservations, we have a special gift uh, from Michael. Thank you very much. Um, he is offering us a $200 onboard credit uh, per stateroom for any new reservations made before February the 18th. And, um, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, we used to just have to call on the telephone or send an email. These days, we are also happy to video chat because one of the things I didn't mention in the very beginning that, that I really should have is the fact that um, we have Expedia in our name and sometimes people think that that means that we're a call center and we are not. Uh, Brian and James are the co-owners of this center and we have an amazing professional team. Uh, to be on our wine team, they have to be um, true professionals in the travel industry and they are ready to take care of your needs for your travel vacation. You're actually assigned a specific wine team member who takes you all the way through to, from your initial inquiry to making sure that your documents get to you and they'll look forward to talking to you when you get home. Those kind of things combined with all of the other things that we've talked about really do make this a great vacation. I do wanna say though, the space is truly limited. It's not one of these hooks at the end of the program it's just the fact um, this sailing and Michael could attest to this is selling extremely well. And that's because why it's the perfect time to be in this destination. And as Brian mentioned, everyone wants to get out of Dodge. <laughs> so um, if you would like to join us, I encourage you to do so soon. You can reach us of course, by video appointment, uh, by telephone. And again, we're happy to video chat with you as well. So let's find out if there are any questions this evening. Uh, James, are you able to see if there's any questions in the chat box for us this evening? I don't see anything in the chat box right now, but do we want to invite people to turn their video cameras on and ask a question live? You're welcome to do We'd that. We'd be happy to. As a matter of fact, let me open up the screen so that everyone can. So if you'd like to turn on your cameras, um, and if you have a question, we'd be more than happy to address it for you. And hello again, everybody. It's good to see all your faces. Um, so raise of hands, anybody else like me saying I wanna be there? Oh, there? There is a question, <laughs> KK. It says, what are the fees for the daily excursions? Oh, that's a great question. So daily excursions can really range. So you're going to find that there's excursions for, I don't know, 65, $85 up to $300, depending on how extreme you want them to be. I also want to remind you that, um, that you don't have to always take a shore excursion, an organized excursion. In some of these places, uh, you are in ports of call where you could stroll off the ship and truly enjoy the destination right where you are. Those little cafes that you saw are a hop skip from the ship itself. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to make sure that I don't over schedule myself on this type of vacation because Part of what you want to do is really to be able to enjoy the ambiance, to sit down at a cafe, watch the people who are walking by, have a little um, 
I mean, right away, when I think of Argostoli, I think of sitting down at the cafe, having the fresh calamari. I, it takes me back to that spot, like now, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, but that's a great question. So there is a really, really wide range, um, but it can range. Uh, I think most of them are probably in the $100, $100 a day is usually what I suggest to people to budget uh, for a daily excursion. Great question. When they get, is that an, a potential amenity that they can get on their cruise? So that is a great question. Thank you very much, Brian. So on this particular itinerary, um, there are some choices for additional amenities and uh, Oceana will include a choice of either an onboard credit or a few shore excursions and um, or a beverage package. But the two that we recommend on this particular itinerary because of the great wine program would be either the shore excursions or the onboard credit. So yes, you can get a couple of complimentary ones. That would be fantastic. Great okay. question. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, uh, this is Jane Little uh, okay. from, from Arizona. Um, are there any airline specials? So there are, and um, so we can choose to use Oceana's Air and Oceana's Air on this particular itinerary will offer um, an $1,100 round trip airfare from most gateways. Um, there is also a promotion running right now with some premium economy air. Um, and then of course, I want to remind you that as a full service agency, we will also be happy to do some comparison shopping for you because we have found that there are some great business class rates available to us with our special contract fares. And then also if you decide to use your miles, we're, help to, we're happy to help guide you with that as well. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Hey Kay, right. here's, here's another question from Stu. Yeah. He says, if we cannot go on this trip, where will we find other wine trips? Oh, well, Stu, I am delighted to say that we have lots of them. Um, so we have a special um, website where we host our exclusive wine club cruises. So if you want to jot it down, um, and then if someone else can maybe jot down mm -hmm. Stu's name, and we'll make sure to email it to you too, just in case. It's winecruisegroup.com. And again, I put it in the chat box too, KK, for people oh, to good. see. There you go. It's in the chat box. And then again, um, you know, we have an email address, wineclub at expediacruises.com. So again, that's wineclub, all together, at expediacruises.com. And if you have any questions and uh, you just want to know where the website is or anything else, um, we'd be more than happy to uh, send that information to you. I see actually, oh, there's a pop-up. I can, I can read this question. I like that. It says uh, from Curtis, oops, it did say it went away, but I think it said, are there any winery visits on any of these excursions? I think that's what uh, Curtis was asking. Yep. And the answer can be yes. So um, there are uh, many of these ports of call, there are both culinary and wine uh, excursions available. So yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> Other questions? I like this group. Everyone's still awake, I'm liking that. I didn't put you okay. to sleep. Any Anything other questions? Else? No? Boy, you guys are easy. Making it easy for me. Well, I want to remind you again that we would love to entertain any questions that you have that you haven't posed to us tonight. Uh, we are available to you and would love to help you get traveling. Um, it is no joke when I say that the fall of 21 is booking like crazy. Um, we've actually made more reservations in this last month than I think we have in the last six months. And uh, all combined, it's been nuts. Um, and also if you're thinking forward to 22, Believe it or not, now is really the time. And that's because of course, you have to remember that inventory um, is limited because everyone who hasn't vacationed in the last year and a half are suddenly panicking to make sure that they do. So uh, make sure that you get your reservations in. Uh, someone's asking if we have other Oceana cruises. Uh, we do have a sailing to uh, South America that's in January of 22, if someone is interested in South America. Um, we have other destinations that are coming up. So we release more and more cruises on our website. And so if you go to that winecruisegroup.com or if there's a destination that you're really interested in, the best thing to do 
is to reach out and have us connect you with one of our wine team. And what they can do is they will watch for it for you and give you a heads up when it's about to launch. So or they'll, uh, re they'll, they'll reach out to me to see what I'm working on. I will tell you right now, you'll see, I don't know, I think 13 or 14 trips on in 2022 that are already done and on the website that you could look at for 2022. But I am putting together wine cruises like crazy right now. Um, so I think there'll be three or four more hitting the website in the next two or three weeks. And I am, it is my booking time of the year where I'm working with wineries, putting together products for them uh, so that they can uh, host their people on board. And you get the, the great privilege of the fact that you get to see everything that everybody's doing so that you can pick what suits you uh, in terms of a wine group, so. Fantastic. All righty, well, I want to uh, again say thank you for joining us. I encourage everybody to put your cameras on and, and wave goodbye to everybody. For those of you on the East Coast, the Midwest, again, thank you so much for staying up late for us. And um, just a delight to see you all again, some of you on the cruises. Thank you. We look forward to sailing with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Have, a, have a good night, everybody. Take care.